So today, um, the, the gospel of today tells us about an amazing story of transformation um, of Zacchaeus. Um, this was someone who was lost without, like people looked at him and they said, no hope. This is a chief tax collector. This is someone who dealt very unfairly with everybody. This is someone who you would look like and say, no hope. This is someone that has no chance of knowing God, knowing Christ, knowing anything. And at the end of the story, we hear that he's called a son of Abraham. And this has great significance. Because what is, what is, what is the big deal about Father Abraham? Father Abraham was the father of faith. Like This is one of the biggest things about, Saint, um, about, uh, about uh, uh, our father Abraham. Um, and at the end of this, we're, uh, Zacchaeus is said to be a son of Abraham a son of faith, someone who had faith according to the example of our father Abraham. So what was so unique about Zacchaeus? In this, in this story, usually we think what was so unique is that yes, and he came back and he gave all the money to the poor and a fourfold, uh, you know, making up the people that he accused, uh, false, uh, falsely accused before. And we look at that and we see, yeah, great. He did, he gave the poor and, and all of these things, but this is not actually what is so significant about the story of Zacchaeus. This, this is a, a fruit, a byproduct of his meeting with Christ. I think what was so unique about Zacchaeus is that he was he had a desire to see Christ this was something on the inside nobody saw and this desire was willing to do anything including overcoming a crowd now we look and we think like we we, re we read through this and yeah, crowd and so he's short and he gets on a tree to, to see the Lord. But this is a pretty big deal for someone like Zacchaeus. A couple months ago we had family in town and we decided to go to New York City. And somehow we made our way to Times Square on a Saturday night in the middle of July. Um, and as you can imagine, Times Square on Saturday night is nothing short of crazy. There is probably like, I don't know, 100,000 people in that Times Square. Big, big crowd. And crowds, crowds are noisy. There's so much noise. There's so many things going on, you know, people talking and music and stuff like that. All kinds of crazy stuff. Um, Crowds are also very distracting. Like you have someone playing music, you have someone selling this ticket to a show, you have you know, all kinds of things going on that distracts you. Like, okay, what do I focus on? Where do I go? Also, crowds are very difficult to overcome. If the crowd is going in a certain direction, if you try to go the opposite direction, it's almost impossible. Like there is... You know, there are, you know, at best, you're going to be shoved and pushed and maybe punched sometimes or uh, possibly stampeded on. Um, so in this case, what did Zacchaeus do? Zacchaeus said, I'm going to have to find a way to overcome this crowd. Or not necessarily overcome the crowd, but find a way around the crowd. And in doing so, he didn't care about what people thought of him. Let's think about it. This is a guy, this is, a guy, this is you know, the, a chief tax collector, someone who's very famous, who's very well known in the community. And for him, for him to, to get on a tree is kind of embarrassing. 
but he didn't care about what people would say about him. Um, he didn't care that actually people would use this as a chance to kind of make fun of him and get back at him for what he's done to them before. He didn't care about any of that. And if we want to meet Christ like he did at the end, and not only that, for Christ to come to his house and to dine with him, if we want that for our lives, we have to follow his example. We have to find a way around the crowd in our lives. Each one of us has a crowd in our lives. I don't know. It's different from one person to another. It could be, it could be um, a lot of busyness, a lot of noise, a lot of activities. There's the, the, the kids and the house and the bills and the, all of these things. So there's always a crowd, there's always noise. If this is your crowd, you need to put that in prayer and ask God for direction as to how you can get around that, cloud, that crowd. So the first thing was the noise, the noise of life, the noise of business. And in, in order for us to do that, in order for us to overcome or to get around a crowd like this, it's going to have to, we have to sacrifice something. Maybe money has to be sacrificed, maybe time with certain people, maybe whatever. But th there, is no, there, there is no way to go around the crowd in our lives without a sacrifice. Another type of crowd, you know, like we said, the crowds are very distracting, so it could be distracting relationships. We have so many relationships in our lives, or what we call relationships, and some of these relationships are good and healthy and helpful, and some of these relationships are very much, not, very much the opposite. And if we want to meet Christ, we have to find a way around this crowd. Crowds are very hard to overcome. Kind of like old habits or old sins that we keep going back to. And we obviously need to repent for this. At the end, Zacchaeus experienced a personal visit from Christ. Because he desired him enough to go around the crowd. My question to you today is, is your desire to see Christ, is your desire to see Christ strong enough, like Zacchaeus, <coughs> to overcome the crowd in your life? Are you willing to make some sacrifices? to get around the crowd in your life? As we discussed earlier, our Lord Jesus Christ praised Zacchaeus' faith by calling him a son of Abraham. So obviously in order for him to be able to do what he did today is he needed faith. It need, it, this takes faith. Overcoming or getting around the crowd requires a lot of faith, actually. And if I don't have the faith, I can ask for the faith. If I don't have the desire, I can ask for the desire. But at least there has to be something on the inside that is working in me, in all of us. And this is the Holy Spirit. It's working inside each and every one of us to give us the desire. We already have received that. But the difference between someone who receives Christ and someone who doesn't is someone who acts on this desire. 
even if it means humiliation, even if it means sacrifice, even if it means giving some things up. I do not have a, like a three-step process for overcoming the crowd in your life. But this is something that needs a lot of prayer. This is something that, you need, that needs us to, to, to get on our knees before God and tell Him, this is the crowd in my life. Help me get around them. So my t challenge for you today is to go home and, and pray and find the crowd in your life. Put it before God in prayer and ask for guidance as to how you can overcome this crowd. I want to conclude by um, the part from Corinthians today. Which our Lord tells us, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Today, Zacchaeus, probably the morning before he met Christ, I don't think he expected to dine with him. I don't think he expected to have him over at his house. I don't think he expected that honor. But the Pauline epistle says, no eye has, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Yes, there is sacrifice. Yes, there may, might be some things that we need to give up. But at the end of the day, what God has prepared for us is way beyond our understanding, way beyond our expectation, and very much worth. Glory be to God. For